Once upon a time, in the kingdom of Edehem, lived two sisters, Esse and Ife, who lived with their father, Etinosa, after losing their mother during Ife's birth. Esse was born with bangles that radiated light. As the girls grew, Etinosa decided he needed a new wife, as Esse was maturing into womanhood and would need the guidance of a woman. Etinosa met Itoan and decided to marry her. One day, he brought Itoan to meet his children and immediately, Itoan fell in love with Esse's bangles. She asked Etinosa to give them to her. Despite him explaining it was impossible unless her wrist was separated from the bangles, Itoan insisted that either she had the bangles or she was no longer interested in the marriage. Etinosa looked from his daughter to his wife to be, and with sadness in his eyes, he gave in to Itoan's request, stretching the bangles to her. The gods forbid and marry you, Itoan yelled. So if I have children for you, and another woman requests the necklace of my child's neck, you would give in? As she said this, she left the home of Etinosa, never to return. Etinosa was filled with remorse and shame, apologizing to his crying children. Esse grew up to become a very beautiful maiden while being a wonderful sister and daughter. King Jerome from the neighboring village asked to marry Esse, and so it was decided that Esse would go along, and so it was decided that Efe would go along with Esse to live in the palace. As Essie, now one-handed, would need assistance. The two sisters arrived at the palace where they were warmly welcomed by King Jerome and the entire village. Everyone was excited to see the king's beautiful third wife, all except Isoken, the second wife of King Jerome. Isoken saw how King Jerome and Queen Omorai, his first wife, were doting on Efe and this made her jealous. Isoken began to plot against Efe. She went to consult with the king, requesting that a competition be conducted among the queens, which would take place for several weeks. The competition will involve three events, a cooking phase, a pito phase, and for the third phase, she will tell the king what it will entail. King Jerome pondered on Isoken's request and decided it was a good idea for his queens to bond. Isoken made him give his word that no matter what a third request would be, it would be accepted. And so, King Jerome swore under the moonlit sky. With that, news of the competition spread in the village. Everyone was excited to watch the outcome. The week for the first competition was decided, so were the rules. Each queen was to prepare pounded yam and ikusi soup, which they were to bring to the market square, where their meals would be tested and scored. As the days drew closer, Essi and Effie could be heard crying every night, as Essie would be unable to cook and pound thoroughly with one hand. Why if he was too young to know how? One night, during the sisters' crying session, they felt a drop of water from the top of their hearts. As they looked up, they saw a war gecko. To their surprise, it began to speak, asking them what was wrong. After narrating that tale, the war gecko told them to wash and place everything they would need for the meal at the back of the hearts and make sure they were the last to leave the palace for the market square. During the wait, Queen Omorai came over to ask Esse and Efe if they would need any assistance, but they gently declined. On the night of their waited day, the girls did as the gecko instructed. In the morning, as everyone was leaving, the first queen came to offer assistance, but again the girls declined. Queen Isoken walked past Essay's odds several times with her food, singing mocking songs. 
After everyone had left, Essie went to the back of her hut, and to her amazement, the most delicious looking food awaited. At the market square, the competition started with the first queen's food being tested. It was approved by the judges and was awarded to the chiefs. The second queen, Isokin's food, was tested and could not be swallowed. Finally, it was Essie's turn. Her food was tested and the judges went wild. It was reserved for the king. Isoke was put to shame in this round and vowed to try on in the next. But again, in the second competition of pito making, the same thing happened. The final competition was decided. Isoke told the king that the dance should be held and the queens are to dance naked. Anyone found with scars should be thrown into the lion's den. Queen Jerome did not approve, but could also not decline, as he was bound by his word. Again, Essie was at the crossroad. As her missing hand was categorized as a scar, she became depressed and could not sleep. As the day drew closer, one night, the sisters were up crying, and again the war gecko came, but this time, it instructed the two sisters to go to the forest of Eve, where they would find a hole. Effie should push Essie's hand into the hole. For two days, no matter what, the hand should not be removed to the third day. When they returned, she should continue to cover up as her usual routine. They were also instructed to boil stones and see what will happen. The sisters told King Jeremy, they wanted to visit their father briefly before the impending doom, and so they embarked on the quest to the forest for two nights. Essie cried to remove her hand, but Effie was adamant to keep her sister hand in the hole, as instructed. On the third day, to their amazement, Essie's hand was restored alongside her bangles. With excitement that they could not share with anyone, they returned to the palace and placed the stones in water to boil. Isokin became curious to see what Essie was cooking for hours. After trying countlessly to see what was in the pot, which the boiling water prevented her from seeing, she decided to defecate in the food. As she tried placing herself on the pot, it stuck to her like magnets, and the hot stones began to burn her. She ran to her hut, her children tried to help, but they could not remove it as well, no matter how hard they all tried. And so, her body began to decay, while the pot still stayed put. The awaited day finally came, and so, the dance started. The first queen's culture, with no scars on her body. It got to the turn of his okay. But she refused to take her clothes off. They tried and tried, and after multiple people trying, they finally revealed her body as she had adored her body with multiple wrappers. Margot could be seen all over her body, and she was pushed aside. Essie stone, and to the amazement of the crowd, Essie was completely free of scars. The crowd went wild with happiness. Isokin was thrown into the lion's den, and the pot that was impossible to be removed was removed by the lion. King Jeremy and his two wives lived happily ever after. Did you enjoy this story? If you did, tell me in the comments what was your favorite part and the moral lesson you think were in this story. Subscribe to my YouTube channels and I'll put the channel names in the comments. Subscribe to this TikTok or YouTube depending on where you're watching it. And thanks for watching guys. Bye.